Hey, what is up guys? I wanted to do a quick update and let you know that a couple of reviews are coming. Happy Thanksgiving to any of you guys who celebrate it. And if not, well, just saying hello. I uh, will be reviewing the Acer Swift 7. And uh, right now I'm just going to give you a quick breakdown of both of these new laptops that I'm going to be reviewing. Just to give you a quick heads up. And uh, also I met one of my subscribers at the Apple Store, which was really, really cool. And I actually recorded the experience and I wanted to show it to you guys. So uh, yeah, first let's talk about the Acer Swift 7. So Acer Swift 7, this is the thinnest laptop in the world. So about a month ago, I reviewed the HP Spectre. That was the thinnest laptop at the time. Now we have the Acer Swift 7. This thing is pretty sweet. All right, so the reason the Acer Swift 7 is awesome is because one, it's got good battery life. It has two USB-C ports as opposed to having you know just one like the 12 inch MacBook. It's got a pretty nice build, it's all metal construction, which I thought was pretty sweet. It looks cool in the gold. And overall, like again, this laptop is just really, really thin. Because of that, I think it's a great laptop. Now, if you compare it to the HP Spectre, the HP Spectre has a much smaller trackpad than the one you see here. The HP Spectre has slightly better speakers and it's actually a lot stronger. The CPU is one of the 15 watt CPUs on the HP Spectre that can run programs a little bit more powerful, like 20% more powerful. Well, this one here runs a 4.5 watt. It's basically a low watt i5 processor which I think is still cool. That's how they managed to make it so thin is by basically putting a lower watt CPU in there. However, it still uses the i5 architecture. So it's a pretty neat little device. I think it's still pretty awesome. So overall, the Acer Swift 7 is pretty impressive. Um, is it better than the HP Spectre? I would say that it's, I think it's a little bit cheaper than the HP Spectre. So because of that, I would say if you're looking for the more affordable device, the Acer Swift 7 is your way to go. But if you want a device that's a little bit more powerful, slightly better build quality, I would, I would go with the HP Spectre. Next up, we have the MacBook Pro 15 inch. This is the one that has the new redesign with the trackpad, a much bigger uh, and louder speaker system built in here, and also has the touch bar, which is pretty neat. And you can unlock your device with just your fingerprint, which I think is kind of cool. And it actually worked, awesome. So. The reason you'd want to get this is if you want something that's very, very powerful. The 15 inch ones come with quad core CPUs, they come with extra RAM, you can get like a 16 gig RAM or more. So only get the Macro Pro 15 inch if you want more power. Now, everybody's talking about the touch bar. Is the touch bar worth it? Is it cool? You know, what's the whole point? I think the touch bar is the next evolutionary step to making this whole keyboard most likely probably just pure glass and we'll be typing on glass. I mean, People are complaining about travel, but the thing is travel is not that important because we already type on phones, on the phone screen, which doesn't have travel anyway, so it really doesn't matter actually. Um, I think the touch bar is a cool, safe step that Apple took to introduce touch into the MacBook family lineup without making the whole thing touch screen because right now, touch screens are still kind of clunky, kind of somewhat hard to use. Are they useful though? Touch screens I think are pretty useful, but Apple is slowly, starting to integrate that into their MacBooks. I think it's definitely a cool feature. I don't think it's like a game changer quite yet, but it's a pretty neat feature and it's cool to see Apple trying to change the way they do things. I think that's neat. This laptop is gonna have four USB-C ports, which is neat, but it really sucks because if you haven't made the switch yet, which most likely you probably haven't, uh, it's gonna be really annoying to have hubs. And I think hubs kind of suck, but Hubs can be part of your desktop setup. They don't have to go with you mobile. And you can also just use a Logitech mouse that's gonna have Bluetooth anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it too much anyway. Anyway, so that's enough about that. If you guys wanna see the review of those products, uh, we'll have the reviews coming probably in the next week or so, probably, I'd say in about a week or less. Take a look at this awesome moment when I met actually one of my subscribers at the Apple Store. What do you know? A of mine that like, saw me and then like said hello. So really neat. I'm here to, to basically buy um, either a Mac Pro or an iMac 5K, or I might get this instead because I know the subscribers are going to want a review on this. They wanna, they're going to want to see how good it games and all that. So <sighs> we're definitely probably going to do that. But uh, this, is, uh, this is Edwin, and obviously I'm Serge. Uh, so uh, yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. It really annoys me. Um, part of it just has to do with like. You know how yeah, so, there are some um, people out there that just really just like, there's Apple haters out there, right? Oh, you've met them. Now, 
It's not that they hate Apple, they hate the Apple people who get really annoying, who are like, oh, like, oh Apple's the best, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. And that's why there's all this hate towards Apple. Yeah. Now, those same people who don't really like Apple and don't like Apple people, yeah. they look at these products and they're like, oh, look, it's, yeah. you know, uh, they, they, don't, they don't go out and they don't try it. I actually used to be an Apple hater myself. So what happened was I was an Apple hater. I went out there, I got an iPhone 5, and uh, I traded it for a Note 2. I used to have a Note 2 and then I traded it for an iPhone 5 and then basically the iPhone 5 was, I was, I was like, you know what, you know, I don't know why people like Apple, it's so crappy. I ended up using it, I ended up actually liking it. It was actually good, it was so surprising. And then from there, I was like, I was like, why haven't I sold the iPhone 5 yet? And there was these, there was these little things about the iPhone that were good, and that's that's Apple magic in the making. It's it's all the little stuff that, that people from the outside can't really see. Like for instance, Touch Bar. You don't know how good the Touch Bar is until you try it. When I heard about the Touch Bar, I'm like, I'm like. Eh. You know, it could be good, it could be good, but it could also be really crappy too, you know? Plus, so like the same thing happened, remember, with the Retina. No yeah. optical drive, no hard drive, this much, you went crazy. Yeah. A couple years later, it, Windows PCs are doing it. But the one thing I do understand, like with Windows, and the whole touchscreen yeah, yeah, stuff, and like, oh, why Mac doesn't have touchscreen, and there's like... It's uh, just not optimized. Have you yeah. touched uh, Linus Tech Tips? Oh yeah, he's great. He's really good. And like, I remember um, he was talking about like, you know, the HP Spectre. Spectre's cool. I did a review on that, yeah. And, but he was right, and uh, it's not the thinnest laptop anymore. Have you heard? It's not. The Acer, Acer Swift 7. And I, have, I have one coming in, uh, probably today, actually. So, yeah. You do? Yeah. Are you sure that FedEx label wasn't ours? It's not ours because I, I sent it to, to FedEx, so I'm going to pick it up from FedEx instead. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I would say as well it's is that nice with, uh, anyway, when it comes to this, it's... Because I haven't mean, seen like Cold Fusion talk about it. Oh, uh, Cold Fusion's great. I love, said, I love Cold Fusion. He's a really, really good he's, YouTuber. Uh, he said, has Apple lost his magic? It has. Yeah. But... He was kind of critical. I, I, I thought maybe he may have been just a tad bit critical. I definitely agree. The, I don't know if I'd call it a price hike. It kind of is a price hike, but what they did is they eliminated the base $1,300 model in favor for the higher storage capacity $1,500 model. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think they've lost their magic quite yet. I feel like they're stalling a little bit, just, just a little bit. Yeah. But overall, when I see what they did with the trackpad, that's exactly what I want them to do. When, when they when they invented this keyboard, this keyboard got so much hate. The keyboard got so much hate. I actually love this keyboard. I tried it on the 12-inch. I was sold. The first time I tried it, I'm like, it actually feels like a mechanical keyboard, but thinner. And and why are people complaining about travel if touchscreens don't have travel? At least you have travel here, which is still pretty good, you know. Yeah. The one thing I was saying as well is um, the reason, remember I friend calls with some of MacBook Air 2? Yeah. She has a Surface 3. Mm. Here, Surface 3 is a cool device. Well, she says there's one thing that she doesn't like about it, which is why she wanted a Mac. Even if she runs Word, it gets hot. When you have a, the, a computer and a monitor in the same dimensions, yep. it creates a problem that never it existed. Does. It does. Cause it, yeah. And she says it messes with her display. And I'm yeah, just like, yeah. that's why I don't like the Surface or the, or the Surface Book or the Surface yeah. Book. They're interesting devices. Oh, yeah. yeah. But why compromise on having your display being messed up? They're, they're just not optimized. That's the thing. That's the problem with the Surface lineup. The Surface lineup is not very well optimized. In, in theory and in concept, I think the Surface lineup is really, really neat. It's really, really cool. Actually, the Surface 3, because of its deficiencies, I, I traded it for a MacBook Air. Yeah. And that's how I made that first MacBook Air video that you saw. Yeah. Um, so the thing about the MacBooks is that they're, they're a very refined system. And that's why they're so good. They're building upon previous existing systems that are really, really good. Um, basically, in the 15 inch, I think everything they did was really good. Yeah, I mean, I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping there's no thermal throttling. See, that's pretty remember cool. Remember what you said before? Yeah. You get that, and then so you, like you get other apps. You know this. And then there's your little thing right there on the yeah. touch bar. What you said. So one thing I like about it as well is you go like this. You can just access everything. So like the one thing is I have with my MacBook Air right now is that these buttons are like. The, the, the buttons, they're yeah, they're really small. No, no, no. They're kind of mushy. The reason why I'm here is to take this in for a service. Ah, push. 
Well, it's, you it. Push yeah. these three keys. Oh no. So basically what It's like getting stuck. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, with the fun, like people are telling me that yes, this is stupid, you know, this and this, but I'm just uh -huh. like, uh -huh. here. There's no way the function keys are gonna get broken like on my That's so true. Oh my god. Like, and the cool thing is because there's there's less um, gaps between the buttons, there's less chance that liquid will get inside, less chance that stuff will build up on the inside. So it's actually a really, really clean setup. Yeah. For serviceability, I think it's great. Yeah. The one thing I'll say is that I am gonna let y'all give this certain stuff because it's like yeah. this, but the one thing is I like about is this is that I game on this daily. I play Lethal Legends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Smite, I have. Smite's Sif, really cool. Yeah, I like Smite. Uh, Civ 5 on your Civ 5. It's awesome. Um, I even, uh, I think the most intense game I ran was Battlefield. I mean, if, yeah. I, if, if you want to play Battlefield. Ba Battlefield 4 is, is, is almost playable. When, yeah. when I tested it, I was getting like. <laughs> 28, 29 frames. If, if you're depending on the map, you can get about 35 frames, 40 frames, depending on the map. If you're playing like Operation Metro, we are like in a tunnel kind of system. Oh, I was gonna say um, as well. I have a Windows partition. Nice. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For gaming, it's a must because Windows takes advantage with DirectX a lot better for gaming. I also ran yeah. Rainbow. Oh, really? Rainbow I haven't played that game yet. It looks really good. Um, I did this. I mean, it ran. <laughs> That's all I'll say about it. It yeah, ran. Yeah. But um. I think when it comes to this, I mean, a lot of, I've been looking a lot into USB-C multi-port adapters. Yes, that's what I've been thinking about too. Because um, I've seen one with exactly what I need, uh, micro SD card slot, SD card slot uh, HDMI, gigabit Ethernet. Yes, those are all important. I, I really want gigabit Ethernet, that's what yeah, I want. Yeah, cause but I got to get gigabit internet speeds at home first too, yeah. which would be good to have because I can't, yeah. I think. But yeah, I mean, it's. There is yeah. one thing though I was gonna say. People, you know what the desktops and stuff? People are saying that like even the iMac looks wrong for the Surface Studio. And then you know what the problem yeah. is with the Surface? It's the got same. it's already got outdated hardware out, out of box. I know that the 980M uh, graphics chip's already a year and a half old. But I, I actually think the Surface Studio is cool. I haven't checked it out yet. I think it's, it's pretty bad. neat. It's also VR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what they got over there. I'm say as well. Is that? That just that creates the biggest problem. Yeah, you get a cool thing like this. Yeah, but with the here's hands the and everything. thing. Uh, anything with like you know with your phone and stuff, it gets dirty, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How dirty is your desktop? Gonna be? <laughs> my desktop was really dirty. My my old gamer desktop yeah. was disgusting. Dude. And then that one, that Surface Studio. Yeah. You're gonna have to like clean it consistently. Dang, dude. Things. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I was thinking about as well, thinking of getting a mid 2014. With the GT 750M with 2 gigs of VRAM? 750M's alright. It's, uh, I mean, it's gonna run all your games. You'll run with high frame rates, uh, low to medium. Yeah. Some games you can run on high. Um, I really wish they had better dedicated graphics options on, on Macs. That, that was like my thing. Yeah. When I, when I, because at first I, I, I did it on the Mac. Yeah, hey Edwin, I'm Aaron. I'm gonna be working with you today. Cool. Um, what do we got going on with your Mac? What's that oh, going on? Say, this. Like sticky keys? Oh. 